Hello. I want to share with you an approach that I like to take to this idea of conserving momentum, this idea of the law of conservation of momentum, where if I have a system that's isolated, there are no external forces from outside of the system to change the momentum, then the total momentum of the system stays the same, even if the individual bits of momentum of things in the system change themselves, the total doesn't change. And I would hope that by now you are aware that I like when I'm solving problems to, I always start by drawing things. And I think that's a really helpful approach to take because we can take the this pile of words and numbers of a word problem uh, and turn that into um, something visual that we can make clear sense out of. It's a way of reorganizing our information. So I always like to draw something first. And so knowing that momentum is mass times velocity, um, I want to be able to show that momentum on a bar chart, but because there are different ways to have the same amount of momentum, like a fast thing moving really slowly or a slow thing that has a lot of mass. I said that badly, um, a fast thing with a really small amount of mass or um, a really slow thing with a large amount of mass could have equal amounts of momentum. So like, let's look at an example of that. Um, I've got two carts here that are about to crash into each other. Uh, on the left is going to be a larger mass cart, and it's got about twice as much mass. If you look closely, you can see that there's some little, uh, some little steel bars placed on top of that one. Um, so it's going to have about twice the mass of the other cart, and it's moving about half as fast. So the cart on the right is going to come in about twice as fast. And when we watch this happen, then we'll also notice that the carts basically come to a stop after they crash into each other. So they collide and they come to a stop. So if I want to represent that on a bar chart, then what I can do is I'm going to make a bar that has a height of the velocity and a width of the mass. Now I'm doing velocity, not speed. So I need to pay a careful attention to direction. So I'm gonna say that moving to the right is the positive direction, moving left is the negative direction. So the, the cart with more mass, I'm gonna make the height of that. I'm gonna say um, two units tall, you can see on my grid there. And I'm gonna make that be four units wide for a box of one of these. And I'm going to make that box be uh, red to represent the first cart. And then for the second cart, it had only half as much mass, but it was originally moving twice as fast. So I'm gonna make a bar for this one that is on the negative side, twice as tall, so four units tall, but only two units wide because it had only half of the mass. And so that bar, and I'm gonna make this one a different color, I'll make this one blue. So I've got two different bars here, but the two boxes have the same total size. And so thinking about um, the what happens after they collide is we know that each of these boxes, uh, each of these uh, carts comes to a stop. And so I could think, I'm just putting an X here for the red one. Um, I could make that red, I suppose, um, to show that the red cart ended up stopped. And I could make a blue X to show that the blue one was stopped. Um, I could think in terms of making boxes for each of these, um, but each one would have, they would have the same width for the same mass, but they would be zero height. And I don't know how to draw a bar that has zero height in a meaningful kind of way. Um, I guess I could draw a line, but we end up with zero velocity for both of them afterwards, which is what we saw in that video.
And so we see that the total amount of momentum for the whole system of both carts, here we have positive some amount and negative the same amount, they add up to zero. And after I've got zero and zero momentum. Now the momentum of the left cart that I put in red did change. It decreased from this big positive amount to zero. And the momentum of the blue one changed from a big negative amount to zero. So the blue one went up from a negative number to zero. The red one went down from a positive number to zero. But the total was the same both before and after. Let's look at putting this into practice. Um, I've got a situation here where I've got a 20 kilogram child skating with an 80 kilogram adult. Um, let's assume then that they're on ice skates um, because they're skating at a skating rink someplace where basically um, we can round that off to frictionless, we can ignore friction. So we could think about if we choose a system of the child and the adult and the stuff they're wearing, then uh, we treat all that like frictionless, then there are no forces outside of the system uh, to push or pull them to change their momentum. So the total momentum is gonna stay the same. So I can make bar charts to make this useful. Um, by showing the kid. I'm gonna say the kid is initially going forwards. I did write that the adult was initially moving in the opposite direction. So if the child initially had a positive momentum, then the adult initially had a negative momentum. I made a bar then for the child that has a width of 20 kilograms and a height of positive four meters per second. The adult four times as wide, 80 kilograms, but a height of negative 0.5 meters per second. And if I look at the math then for what's the momentum of that system, then I just add the two together and I've got positive 80 kilogram meters per second. Our unit here multiplying kilograms times meters per second is just kilograms times meters per second. We don't have a special name for that. Uh, and the adult has negative 40 kilogram meters per second. So the total for that whole system of child and adult is positive. 40 kilogram meters per second. Looking at the final situation, they're moving together because the kid clings on to the adult. They're moving together. So we could make that as one bar that's 20 kilograms wide and another bar that's 80 kilograms wide. And both of them have the same unknown final velocity. Or we could look at both of those 20 and 80 kilograms together as a 100 kilogram blob that have that same unknown final velocity. Either way, I've got 100 kilograms with this final velocity height. So my ending momentum is 100 kilograms times final velocity. But I also know, since this system was isolated, that this 100 kilograms times final velocity has to be equal to the initial 40 kilogram meters per second. So I set these equal to each other. And I end up with a positive final velocity, positive 0.4 meters per second. And I suppose I should have put in a positive sign there. And that positive sign is showing us then that the kid and the adult are moving forwards. Even though the adult has way more mass, the kid was going really fast comparatively. And so the kid then, they're going in opposite directions, but the kid ends up pushing the adult back the other way. So the kid slowed down a lot from positive four meters per second to positive 0 0.4 meters per second, the adult had a much smaller change in velocity. The adult had a way smaller change in velocity um, because the adult has way more mass. So the adult went from moving slowly in one direction to slowly in the other direction. But the total amount of momentum stayed the same is a way that we could predict what's gonna happen to these two after they collide. One more example. I've got a two kilogram cart moving, let's say to the right is the positive direction, to the left is the negative direction. Um, it is very important that we pay careful attention to direction. That's one of the most common mistakes that people who are new to, to working with momentum make here is to think in terms of speed rather than in terms of velocity. And if we don't work in terms of velocity with positive and negative signs, then we're going to end up doing things that don't make sense, that don't work. For example, in that original one, if we only had positive numbers, then there's no way we could have ended up with zero velocities in the end. We need to pay attention to direction.
So two kilogram cart moving a positive four meters per second initially bounces off four kilogram cart moving in the negative direction at three meters per second. So we could think about the initial momentum there. Um, the total is going to be negative because I can see that the red bar is bigger. So I've got positive 8 kilogram meters per second and negative 12 kilogram meters per second gives me a total of negative 4. The final situation, the 2 kilogram cart bounced back the other direction. So I want to be careful there that I get the direction switch there. Positive initially, negative in the final. So I've got a final momentum for the purple two kilogram cart of negative two kilogram meters per second. And it looks to me like there's a lot more red negative area in the initial situation. So I'm guessing that this four kilogram thing is probably maybe also gonna be going in the negative direction as well because I think I need a negative total area, just eyeballing that. I might be wrong. And if I am wrong, then the math will the math will show me that. So I just guessed that I'm going to get a negative velocity here when I drew that. But we'll calculate, and it'll either be a positive or a negative number when we calculate it. So, And then we'll know for sure. So my total momentum, looking at the initial stuff, positive 8 plus negative 12 gives me negative 4 kilogram meters per second. And on the final side, I've got negative 2 kilogram meters per second for the purple bar, plus 4 kilograms times unknown final velocity that I want to solve for. So in order to solve this, then I need to add 2 kilogram meters per second to both sides of the equation so I can work towards isolating that final velocity. So adding that over, then I end up with negative 2 kilogram meters per second is equal to 4 kilograms times final velocity. Divide by that mass, and I get a final velocity of the red cart of negative 0.5 meters per second. The negative sign on that answer tells me that I was right in guessing that that final velocity would end up negative. If I had guessed wrong, then I would have just gotten a positive number here, but I got a negative. Um, so that verifies for me that I did guess correctly. So next time, um, what we still need to follow through on is what do I do? How do I modify this situation when I have uh, an impulse from some force that's coming from outside of the system so that my final momentum is going to end up different from the initial momentum? But that's for another time. I'll see you later.